We started our initial before treatment observations in our data table. Now we're going to work to our next part of the lab, which is going to be oil water separation. After we do that, we'll then take data again. For oil water separation, we're actually going to be using a glass funnel with a little tube at the end, okay? We're gonna take advantage of the fact that oil and water are immiscible, meaning they don't like to mix together. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pinch the bottom of this rubber tube, and to do that, I'm going to use what's called a pinch clamp. A pinch clamp is just a little piece of metal that if you open it and close it, it pinches shut. So I'm going to pinch this rubber tube shut so no liquid comes out. I'm then going to take my oil and water sample and I'm going to pour it all the way in to this funnel. What I'm then going to do is give it a little bit of time and I'm gonna let the oil float to the top as the more dense water sinks to the bottom. So what I'm going to be doing is taking advantage of the difference of their densities so that eventually I can get all the oil to the top and physically separate the water towards the bottom. I'll then be able to let out the water from the bottom and keep the oil behind. That's the goal. So we're gonna give this a few minutes to set up and sit so we can try to separate these as best as possible. All right, we're back and now that we've let this set up, it's probably hard to see from here, but at the very top there's a thin layer of oil and like bubble globules of oil, and underneath is still the dirty water. Now, by no means is this water clean, but we now have taken advantage of the oil rising to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ring stand and raise up my funnel a little bit. I'm then gonna put a clean beaker of water underneath here, and I'm going to pinch shut and unclamp this. What I'm going to do is slowly let out the water and drain it out, but as soon as I get towards the bottom here with the oil, I'm gonna pinch it shut and separate the oil out. So that's the whole idea of this physical separation. So you can see I'm gonna slowly let the water through, it's draining in here. But while I'm doing that, I'm keeping an eye on where my oil layer is. I don't wanna let that out into my water sample. So I'm gonna slowly drain, slowly drain, slowly drain and now i'm getting towards this layer of oil so i'm going to be really careful not to get any of the oil in there all right and now you can see the little globules or little like spheres or circles of oil i don't want that so i'm going to take another beaker and i'm going to empty that oil out into another container now by doing that we now have a slightly cleaner sample of water Okay, because we got rid of the oil through physical separation. Remember, in a heterogeneous mixture, there's just a bunch of different things mixed together, and you can physically separate them in order to make something you know, more pure or by itself. So we did a physical separation by taking out the oil. We didn't use a chemical reaction or anything crazy, we just used their densities to separate them out. And physical properties, fall under things like density. So that was an easy way to figure that out. All right, I'm gonna clean this part up and eventually distribute this slightly cleaner water back into a clean graduated cylinder so that we can take our next data point, which is on how much water is left. So stay tuned. All right, so we are back. We cleaned out our graduated cylinder and now I'm taking the slightly cleaner water. We got rid of the oil, it looks like but well, we're gonna see how much volume of that water is left. And ooh, look it, I already accidentally separated out some of the solids as well. So we'll use that to our advantage since we're trying to clean this water. But here we go, if I read this Erlenmeyer, not Erlenmeyer flask, sorry, but this graduated cylinder, it looks like we have 89 milliliters of the liquid left. So go ahead and write that down under after oil water separation, there's 89 milliliters left. Now the color looks still about the same, doesn't it? It's still that yellowish, brownish, beige color. As far as clarity, it still looks pretty cloudy to me. So nothing has improved with that. Odor-wise, surprisingly, there's actually a lot less odor. It's not as strong. There's still like a spicy, garlicky smell to it, but not nearly the smell that it used to have, which is nice. As far as the oil, we don't really have that oil layer anymore, which is a good thing. 
so we got rid of the oil later. So, so in presence of oil, you can now put no under your data table. And presence of solid, yeah, there still are some chunks of solid in there in that. So we're not quite clear of that. But we did remove some of them as well. So that was kind of a nice touch. All right.